Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so just tell me if the sound sounds good, um, or if you hear me. <laughs> so yeah, I'll get started now. Very good. Okay, so um, the present situation, uh, they've started um, this Joseki thing in the lower right, and it looks like the fight here could continue for a bit. Um, both sides have a weak group in the center of the board, so um, it's sort of natural for them to play locally, or uh, I don't know. Um, this is a point where it could be left. Very good. So just to go back one move now, let's see if I can find the, yeah. So here, if black had played here, um, this would be a case where it's pretty forced for white to continue locally. And this would probably be good for white, even if white ends up losing five stones on the right. And a variation like this. Um, it's just going to be um, pretty painful for black. However, black does it. So something like this, maybe uh, there's, there's going to be this forcing move. There's going to be this forcing move too later. And so white's going to have forcing moves all over the place. So that's probably not so good for black, even if black captures the five stones. And black played here. So locally, I would expect a move something like this for white. Um, if white's going to reinforce that group, this would be a very natural move. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the beginning of the game and see how they started it. Um, it looks to me like uh, Yama is trying to get out of the the openings that are likely to have been researched uh, with AIs, just because um, people tend to research first with the star points, just because they're so popular. So when you play three, four points like this, there's a tendency that gets off the map for players who have who've done some research with an AI and have a, a kind of an opening planned. And when white presses here, uh, we all know that this is supposed to be a, a great move, pressing on the 5-4 point. Um, if black had simply answered with the, you might call it the old Joseki, the most common Joseki, this is, it's okay to play this one. Um, Nothing wrong with it. White probably will play here, and you can see White's getting a big position on the lower side. So this is basically White's plan, and Black actually has a number of options here, which include pressing here, which would be a kind of a weird trade-like situation, um, where there would be a lot of potential trades happening. So White might crawl here, after which Black might crawl here, so this kind of almost like mirror goal. Um, and this kind of thing could actually happen with players playing like this. And then I guess black would probably have an opportunity to play towards the upper right corner. Maybe one of these again. Oh, sorry, it's white's turn, isn't it? So white, white would be able to play something like this. Okay, so so that's some another thing black could have done. And in the game, this move is an attempt. Kicking here is actually something that's done. It's an attempt to take Sente um, with a threat left behind. So first of all, if white plays straight down here, this exchange is supposedly a slight advantage for black, even if black reverts to the old Joseki. In this Joseki, let's go back there. Let's go back there. Yeah, so, so in this Joseki, if black crawls here, and it's like this, then and, and, uh, later in the game, white will have options of playing here, or for instance, it's, it's not stuff that's going to happen immediately. I actually did a video about this, Joseki. Uh, sometimes you can have white playing moves like this. This is actually one of the standard Joseki sequences where white gets to play the 3-3 three, three point. So this 3-3 three, three point is um, a very common thing that happens in the process of some of the basic Joseki sequences and budget but bug, bug cat cat bug is asking is this kick a post spot idea um pretty much so yeah so it, it's something that started being played i think at the time of alpha maybe um it was already starting 
and it was helped by research with um, neural network systems. So since white 14 here in this diagram is a thing, it's, it's something that white is hoping to do at some point, um, and there are various ways that it can happen. Um, if black gets to kick here once and white answers like this, then supposedly it's a slight gain for black. That exchange is considered to be a kikashi most of the time, uh, an advantageous exchange for black. So that's the idea with the kick. And that's why white in the game is answering it with this. Um, the YouTube chat window is cut off at the bottom. Indeed it is. Um, let's see if I can fix that. Okay, uh, just barely, uh, maybe not quite. I have to, uh, I might have shortened the, okay. I'm shortening, I, the, twi the Twitch window is losing out a little bit, but yeah. Okay, that's my, my, my best attempt. I'll leave it at that point. Okay, so back to the game. Um, so what white is trying to do with this is that if black answers like this, then uh, white can take sente to cover the right side. So white's sort of playing both sides in this variation, and black will have to answer probably like this. So white's getting a very solid shape on both sides, or white can even leave it at this point to play this point, which is... A pretty important point in the lower left corner. So this is what White's Hane on the second line is trying to do. And Black counters by playing here, heating up the local situation. And this is actually kind of an established Joseki here, where White is getting a good position on the outside, but as we saw, um, as we saw, Black is threatening to pull out with the one stone. So that's what um, the whole thing here is considered to be an even fight. Black did get the press here, and uh, we get to see another way that white can answer that. That's another unusual move. Um, it would have been possible for white to play the kick, and that would have been... Um, it could have turned into something similar, even. So kicking was an option. Uh, crawling was an option. If white had crawled, black probably would have escaped here, anyway, because escaping here is a pretty important move. So in the game, white slided and black escaped. So what's happening with this is that if white extends here, uh, maybe black's going to push once, or maybe black's just going to play here. Um, so there's the extension here. And so that's the whole point of black's playing an Atari on the third line, was to leave this, uh, this extension. Uh, next. So maybe Black's going to push here once uh, and then extend. So something like that. Black's group in the corner is pretty weak also. Or it might be this way. I'm not 100% sure. Um, Black's group in the corner is going to be in trouble too and White has the option of living by crawling a lot on the second line. So it, there is some there are some potential variations in which Black's going to end up dying in the corner there. But white's going to be crawling on a on the second line a lot, and various bad things will happen on the way for white. So it it could be pretty close to even. And so white avoided that by playing a hane, which is forcing. And then again, if white just simply uh, someone was asking, um, it's a bit far in the past, so I don't really remember. So sorry about that. But someone was asking what happened to that stone on the second line that white was uh, where white was captured. Um, if white just connects here, black's going to extend here. And for the time being, um, you can see that those stones that white has 
on the side or under a bit of pressure. It sort of reverts to the variation that I was just showing you. So in order to avoid that, white played a more forceful move here, in which case white is threatening to um, to play something like this. This would put a lot more, this would virtually it would kill the corner. So in this case, white would win the race to capture. And in the other case, or at least white would have a, a distinctive advantage. And in this case, even if we assume black some at some point gets to play these moves, this black group is not so strong. So if white crawls a couple of times, white should be able to, to win the, the race to capture. Um, with this sequence that probably comes up in one of my life and death problems. So um, that's something you can look for. Oh yes, Alvin P. That's a good question actually. It's it's sort of interesting that we have Iyama coming up at this point, but actually he is not the last player for Japan. So um, this player, this tournament, there's five players each. That's a good uh, a good cue for cue for me to be explaining this actually. So there's five players each country, uh, five for Japan, Korea, and um, China. And um, Japan and Korea have both lost two players. Um, in Japan's case, that's Shibano and Kyokagen. Shibano, Toramaru, and Kyokagen. And so Iyama is coming up as the third player. Um, I'd say that Iyama is supposed to be the strongest player in Japan. So you might expect him to come as the last player. Um, but I think that the, the issue here is probably his tournament schedule in Japan. So he, he happens to have some an open space here for this tournament. Well, some of the other players like Ichiriki uh, seem to be a bit more more busy. So that could be what's happening here. Um, Korea has three players left. The, the two Shins, Shin Jin So and Shin Min Jun. And uh, another player, let's see, I, I it slips my mind. And Japan and China has four players if we include today's uh, Fang Tingyu. So they they still have KJ, they have me, uh, Yu Ting, they have um, a, a Li, one of the Li's, <laughs> the more famous Li. Um, okay, so um, it's actually just uh, an early stage of the tournament. There's going to be 15 rounds, 14 rounds, 14 rounds. Um, and it, this is just the sixth round. So there's still plenty of games to be played. And all three countries... Um, have some have their top players left behind left except that Yama's already shown up so he's a bit early but I my guess is that it has to do with his tournament schedule so this diagram I have on the board here is an example of how white's attachment that's the marked move in the with the triangle on it um, how it's working to put more pressure on black's corner so this would be a a, a success for white or it would be bad for black I might say so that's how Black was sort of forced to capture the one stone, and White got to connect at the fourth line there with Sente, and then protect. So this is protecting White's lower side. Mm hmm Yes, Bune was the other name. Yeah, yeah. That that's the that's the one that slipped my mind. Yes, uh, as long as Korea has Shin Jin So, as people seem to be commenting here, they, they yes, as long as Korea has that player, it's it's undecided, at least. So Black um, has a weak group in the center, and yes, uh, some some of the people in the comment in the chat were mark, uh, remarking about this move. It would it be natural for Black um, to play on the top and. Playing jumping on the top is actually the standard move in this in this Joseki variant. So black could play here um, and continue playing in the center. So it's sort of interesting that black did not choose to play that. Um, it would have been a lot easier. And black's group in the corner is is not going to die. It's not going to get into that too that much trouble. So this would be a more calm... I would advise people to play this way. Um, and probably would not advise people to play in the way of the game. It's a bit more greedy as far as territory is concerned. So if it works, that's a good thing. But of course, white for the time being, white has an opportunity to attack. 
black curls around. Um, let's see how close we've come to the game. Okay, so white jumps there. I was expecting a move um, like this. Oh, sorry. Should back up. Yeah, I was expecting this. Um, white's move in the game puts less pressure on black. Puts less pressure on black, but it's a more balanced move. So white's moving towards the right side, reducing black's potential there. Um, giving up a little bit in the center. So black connected here. White's probably going to answer that um, in some fashion. White actually could connect. Um, he's he's pausing a bit here, so it's it's a sign that he's thinking of multiple moves. Um, so locally, this would be perfectly reasonable to answer directly. But you might note that white could actually answer on the outside too, and be connected with this. So it's a choice of those two. Uh, playing playing nothing at all, um, it would be a bit painful. So like if white played something like like this, um, it does look a bit painful when when black plays there. If white plays this move, then black's going to be able to capture this stone. Uh, white could conceivably play something like this. It does seem like a lot of stones on the second line and caving in a little bit, so it's probably more natural for white to play play here or, or here. So I've caught up at this point. Okay, white connected. So yeah, we've caught up with the game, and it's a it's the fight here is, looks like it's going to continue for a bit. Uh, Black's probably not going to leave that group of uh, it's eight stones. Not not going to leave it alone now. Yeah. And so yeah, so so Black played there, and the fight in the center should continue. If we look at the territory, white's only territory is on the lower side, so white probably has about 15 points there to start with, and some a little bit in the lower left corner. Usually white will get some territory in the upper left corner. So white does have some territory. Black has um, less than 10 points on the right side, uh, but does have a lot of potential um, on the open area of the right side, and of course the left side too, in this kind of um, it looks like black is, has potential to connect up to the left side of the board and make some kind of a moyo potential territory there. Okay, uh, Nick B is asking, how much time do they get? That's a good question, too. Uh, I think they have one hour apiece with uh, probably um, conventional bioyomi. So it's um, probably five sets of, I believe it's one minute apiece. Um, that's my understanding. Um, I might be wrong about the Byoyomi, actually, because um, that's something that they're changing a lot nowadays. And sometimes the Koreans have shorter sets of overtime. Uh, but the standard way of doing it is one minute, five times after they run out of time. And I think it's just one hour with this tournament. Okay, so uh, yesterday, yesterday, uh, let's see, I, um, Fang Ting, you had a very convincing win against Park, Park Jun Wang, and so that was China versus Korea. Maybe we have time to do a short commentary of that. So I, I can um, make a diagram of that in on this board, actually. So this was the game, yesterday's game, the fifth round of this tournament. And uh, I couldn't... Um, I actually have made a mistake, so let's, let's go back a bit. I couldn't do the commentary for you. 
It was a one space shimmer, yeah. So um, in this kind of opening, uh, usually the moves are either this one, which was the game's move, or attaching against the, the, the shimari. So th these are moves that would be suggested by some computer programs. So this is how it continued. And black did not do that, no. So black black invaded the 332. So it's a very modern opening here. And white pincered at this point. Black played here. And at this point, the computer's suggestions sort of um, centered around starting something in the lower right area. So for instance, something like this, or doing something similar with white 18 being um, one line closer, and, and then doing something like this. Starting the fight here seemed to be the focus of what the computer, what Katago wanted to do. Um, and I was seeing a lot of variations like that. It was, it was sort of hard to judge. Um, so, oh, sorry about that. And let's get back to the, okay, sorry about that. That was just a misclick. Fortunately, I didn't have so many moves on the board. And so it continued like this. And white played on the left side here. Um, so this was already starting to look good for black. If we look at the computer, um, the score. And um, when white started this, this is actually a very popular move that is supposed to be a computer, um, a com computer generated type of move. Um, but it didn't work very well in this position. So this is where the game started to go bad for white. And if white had extended here, it would have been more like something like this. This might have had more op um, more opportunities for white when compared to the game, um, where white would still be threatening to move out with these stones. So it would be something like that, um, a fight in the center of the board. Uh, but in the game, white cut here. So cutting here, if white, if everything goes goes according to white's plan, this can be very uh, successful. So basically white would like to be able to play the Tari here. And if white has an advantage in co-threats and gets something like this, then white gets the whole corner. So usually this is going to be okay for white since we have to consider the fact that um, white started with a black's corner enclosure. So we started with black having two stones in those in that corner and white has taken the whole corner for himself. So that's a, a huge local profit and it's more than enough to make up for the outside thickness that black gets. So this is almost always good for white. And the problem is that when white plays this Atari here, uh, black quite often will play the co here. And in this game, black has a co threat here, which is going to capture white in the corner. So it, it's either going to die or it's going to be very painful. So, um, so white did not do that, and white played on Atari first. And again, if black plays like this, white is going to get the corner um, in, in some fashion. So this is, and black's probably going to play here. Um, I researched a variation, something like this. Uh, and this again would be, it would be okay for white, with a lot of potential, a lot of Aji on the outside there. So black had a very nice way of avoiding that by playing this move, which gives black a very good shape on the upper side, first of all. So uh, black has a great shape on the upper side now. And if white plays here, black's going to get a good shape on the right side too. So this is just going to be two strong black groups with a white group that's weak. You can see it has a false eye there. Uh, white doesn't even have a, an eye in the corner yet. And so um, it's really bad for white. So white took, and black pulled back here. And so this is just getting worse and worse for white. So this is the game variation here. And uh, white started this big fight in the center. Um, and it's a very difficult fight for white. So I'll just uh, continue for a little bit more. It's a kind of a fun game because it's so, um, it gets sort of bloody here. <laughs> uh, Okay, so let's see, where did white play? White, um, 
I'll have to check this. Oh yeah, white kicked once. And then played here. And now white starts to get into trouble on this side. Black's trying to attack white on a large scale here. And white is trying to counterattack. But of course, white's shape there is not so good. So that's a bit painful. And then uh, black gets to squeeze like this. So this is fun. And then we got into this variation. This is the final interesting variation. I might say, well, it's, it's exciting towards all the way to the end. But in this variation, um, if white runs out, white can escape with these stones. But black is already threatening white in the upper right area. So if white plays here to save those stones, then black can peep here. And this is a net. So it's it's going to be difficult, or I might say impossible, for white to save those stones in the upper right at the same time as avoiding the net here. So, and if white plays on this side, uh, black can just go after these stones. This would probably be good enough for, for black and be a huge territory there in the upper right. And you can see black's doing okay in the lower right also. So it's just this thickness that white gets in the center, but everywhere else white's getting beaten up pretty badly. So it's, it's not good for white. And instead white squeezed. Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble stopping here. Well, in the game, uh, black cut white here and um, everything got killed. Fortunately, the, the game is moving slowly, so we don't really have a lot of moves to catch up with in today's game. I might as well go ahead and show you some more moves. So this is the game variation. If white had played here, black would have been able to escape. Usually this is a captured position, but black can cut here, cut here and connect under. So this was Black's plan here. This would capture the four white stones and save Black's group in the center by doing so. So that was the plan for Black there. And when White played on this side, this stopped, uh, this enabled Black to cut here. Because the problem that Black had was that if Black had cut immediately, it would have been a net like this. So that was why Black wasn't doing that immediately. But instead started with this, and now Black can cut here. And if white plays here, white's going to be okay on the side with two eyes, but it's going to be in white's going to be in trouble in the center now. So instead, white played on this side, and black slided here. The whole thing is that white has a forcing move here, so black's avoiding that. Um, for instance, if black had played here, um, it wouldn't be so good to lose these stones on this side. So black's avoiding that weakness, leaving the potential Atari here. But he doesn't have to play it yet, because if white plays here and then here, black's going to squeeze from this side, and white's going to have even less eyes. So that's uh, that's why white is not playing the target 96. And it continued like this. And it turns out white has this dead shape here. For instance, if it's like this, for instance. There's no way for white to make two eyes there. Um, sorry, like this. It's, it's just a dead shape. And white chased black in the center, but it, it didn't work out very well. The whole the whole center was... Um, black escaped in the center, too. So that was Fantinu's game yesterday. A very convincing win against uh, one of Korea's top players. So let's get back to the, the today's game. So um, we don't really... We didn't lose... We didn't miss too much. It was just a few moves there. So this is the game position here. Um, we left off with black curling around here. And white played a move in the center. White is playing very conservative. Let's see. Um, get rid of this. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, this is, again, it's a very cautious move that white's playing. White's playing very solidly there, making a little space for himself. Um, without really trying to attack black in the center. So it's it's not the way I would have played, but it's a very stable way, I suppose. 
and here we are. He's, he's just strengthening that group. Um, I guess it's pretty close. And we have put up with the game. You prefer, uh, Leonardo prefers white. I sort of uh, prefer white, but it's probably pretty close. I mean, white's last two moves in the center, they were sort of on the defensive side. So they weren't very strong attacks against black. And in this position, black's going to be trying to, to make a kind of a moyo on the left half of the board now. The right side is it's probably not so attractive. Um, firstly, because Black's group on the right there, it's alive. So Black doesn't need to add stones to that group. So that's an important point. And also the fact if Black plays something on the right side, um, for instance, if Black plays something like this, and later on White's going to jump into the 3-3 three, three point, Black's gain is not so big. So it, there's not much worth in surrounding the Black side, the right side there for Black now. Just because this group in the, on the right is alive already. So if we were to limit Black's choices to moves in the upper right area, it's probably better just to play something on the upper side. So that's that would be the next local move, unless Black has a more strong move against White in the center. Um, and then later on, um, after all the sides and everything were finished, uh, maybe Black would be thinking of doing stuff like this. Um, this would come much later in the game. Moves like this or might like this would come much later in the game. So playing a move at one locally, that's conceivable. It's probably not the big... Uh, I'd, I'd say the left side of the board is more important. Unless black can find something... Um, something in between all these loosely connected white stones, if black can find something like that, it would be um, an interesting thing to try. So black might be looking for some kind of attack in the center. It is important that Black's group on the right side, it's very, very solid. So you could play two or three normal moves for White, and they would have no effect on that Black group. Like, you, I would even, apart from capturing these three stones with two moves in a row, there's there's probably not even any Coltress that White could play. Okay, so um, Black's move. Um, Alexander Begging is um, begin is asking should Black press at the top left? That's that's obviously a um, an option. Um, it's always a move that will it's a move that will always get good a good score from the computer. If you're using neural networks, if you're using something like Katago or even Leela, or there's some other computers that are stronger than some other programs. I think that Kado is probably the strongest that we have easy access to by putting it in our own computer. Um, it's going to suggest pressing in the upper left. It's, it's a very natural. So playing, um, so playing here. Very natural. Um, and it works with this opening in a human way also. So this is something that I would be considering playing something in the middle of the side. Um, playing something here is uh, just for normal moves. These are very natural. Unless black can find something uh, stronger against white's group on the right. Because basically black five, it's it's not um, an imme immediate attack. So black might be looking for something stronger than that. Okay, the cut at I-14. The cut here is, um, so for instance, in a shape like this, um, cutting there, yeah, black would probably ignore it to a certain degree. So like, for instance, I would want to think in, in the, the way of moves like this.
uh, for instance. Stuff like this, just um, just squeezing from the outside if possible. So that would be my instinct, just not not um, actually trying to save the one black stone, but looking for moves like this. This one looks a bit dangerous, actually. So uh, maybe here. And if white pushes through, uh, there's a ladder there, so white eventually has to pull back. And this would be um, painful for white on the outside. That that group on the outside is starting to fall apart. So white will not have time to attack black in the center. Probably has to defend on this side. And black would have time to, to put a stone in, for, for instance, like this, or start stuff like this. This is going to be okay for black. Yeah, so th this is the kind of um, thing I would be thinking of with black if white challenged me to a fight there. It's more important to focus on the left side of the board for black. So that's that's my answer for why I think uh, cutting at i14 would not be uh, very good. Okay, yeah. So this is the exciting move. Um, sort of hesitating to suggest that. Um, hitting the weak point in white's connection. Smibro says hello. Hello, hello in, in Twitch. The elephant size, yes. So this is, um, white has two large knight's moves to defend. So basically if white um, answers something on the inside, that would be, uh, for instance, um, something like this. This is already a Kikasi, even if black plays something on the outside. This this might actually make the whole white group a bit more heavy, that exchange there. So yes, um, white would like to try to find something a bit more active than that. So white really wants to try to punish this black stone by playing on the outside of it, somehow. It's probably a bad idea for white to, to push somewhere. So if white pushes here, black's going to push through. Probably push through again. Maybe just going all the way like this. And if white pushes from the other side, black's going to push through here. You can see it's it's not a very good connection when this kind of thing starts to happen. So this would not be very well connected either. And um, even if black just starts with something like this, you can see that white really needs, at some point white's going to need to protect this side. It's going to be cut off. And it's going to be very painful when black manages to do that. So, so white needs to be backing off um, to prevent this kind of move. Okay, so white pushed here in the game and black pushed here. Uh, Black's asking, uh, which side does white uh, make the tiger's mouth, the kaketsugi shape? So if white plays on this side, black's going to um, force with this. Or if white plays on this side, this is not very well connected. So if something like this happens, you can see that I would say that it's pretty obvious that white's getting cut off here and is probably in trouble. If white answers here, this is a kind of a halfway move. For the time being, Black's probably going to be playing something on the outside. It's not 100% connected. So in some cases, uh, you're going to see Black play this, um, threatening to push through on the right, or wedging here to cut White off. So this, this sort of fills up all of Black's liberties. So it depends on Black's group on the lower side being strong enough. Uh, but it... it, it, it does it exist as a way for black to be cutting white off. Uh, so white's connection there is not 100%. So it's, um, black's just asking white how white's going to answer. Oh, and so white played on this side. <clears throat> Chris Davis, yeah, that I think that's a good, ex um, a good description of Yama. He... He likes his groups to be in trouble, you might say. He, he likes to have 
his opponent trying to attack him uh, because um, he's very good at handling that kind of thing. So he likes to have an advantage in territory and um, having the weak group is not something that bothers him as much as it does usually, for most people that is. So that's what Chris Davis is meaning when he says that um, Yama is good at Shinogi. That's what Shinogi is, uh, saving uh, groups that are in danger. So here white is putting pressure on the one black stone. If black extends here, um, black, that gives white a good flow of the stones, which makes connecting here sort of the only move that white has to think about. And that exchange of the marked white stone and black one is good for white. It's making the two black stones more vulnerable. So it, it means that black's going to have to deal with those two stones and white gets an extra tempo at some point. White's not going to really uh, sacrifice anything yet. No. I think the game very much at this point, it does focus on this fight in the center. And so not, not sacrificing anything yet. Um, and if we're talking about, for instance, um, the potential cut that I was talking about here, this is also something that I sort of doubt that white is going to back off from this fight also. So it could lead into a, some huge fight there. Um, just the fact that playing like this is going to fill all of, white, all of Black's liberties there. Um, it does make a lot of potential trouble for Black on the other side. Um, and it's going to be very exciting, and to say the least. So this is something that White might be ready to, to do as a fight. Or in some cases, White would sacrifice the two stones. But usually, playing something like this and allowing Black to push through here is usually going to be painful. So black connected. And again, white has to choose how to connect here. Yes, so this is, um, it's really, yeah, the only choice, I suppose. So if white had played here, then white stone on the outside there at um, J12, it's, it's not really working that well. To, to start anything with black. So black would probably play... Um, white, black can even play on this side. And still white cannot capture those two stones. Or black can play on this side. Um, cutting off the one white stone there for the time being. And the strong position black has on the right side is, is coming into use here. So it's, it, it gives black the opportunity to play a lot of moves on the outside. I think this looks good for black. But on the other hand, if white plays on the outside, which seems to work well with white stone there, just the fact that it's not connected is probably a trouble. It's just trouble for white, I see. Uh, white can't capture the, the black group fast enough. Um, so white's group on the right is going to be in trouble. And so he connected in the middle. So for the time being, white's connected up, but we have to remember the stone there at 0, 0, 011, it's not 100% connected. So I think this is working according to plan for Black. The fact that Black uh, played this move here, the attach, the the kind of peep here, um, threatening all of the weaknesses that White had. And in this sequence here, Black um, ends up playing this Knight's move. So this is the move that Black wanted to play anyway, as a kind of a shape. And... Um, Black has heated up the local fight just because these two black stones are sort of in the way when white tries to do something there. So black's putting some pressure on white's group there and is going to try to use that, the local pressure, to help um, help himself build on the left side of the board. So black's ultimate plan here is to build something on the left side of the board. A moyo there, some territory if possible. So that's what black would like to do. I think if black gets the whole left side, it doesn't really matter what happens to those two stones in the center. So my instinct would be to, to just play on the left here, maybe this one, and continue building on the left side. It's not as if it's guaranteed to become territory yet, but it looks big.
Uh, Chris Davis is asking about the next few days. I think that um, there's a few more uh, games uh, coming up. Um, I can't do it tomorrow, but I probably will be able to do it the day after. So um, that's going to be around 8, I believe. Yes. So I'll, I'll probably do it, do it on Monday. Um, it's a, a Saturday here for me. So um, in two days, I plan to be back with the uh, it'll be interesting to see, see who the players are at that point Okay, uh, Leonardo was, De Wagner is asking about white P8 or O9, but I don't see it happening. Is there some move white could have on the right side that would help escape? So um, locally, the shape, uh, let's just say black plays something like this, like this. Locally, the shape would sort of be this one. So this would, this would be a shape for white on the right side, um, and it would be potentially capturing those black stones. Um, problem number one is that black might not just uh, bother with those stones and sacrifice them to get a good position on the left side. I don't know if this is all turning into territory, so maybe a cautious player would put a stone there in the middle. Um, so this could be what's going to happen. Black's just going to ignore it. There's also the fact that we have to remember that in some cases, um, and in some cases, as I was saying, white's not completely connected up there. So there, there's the problem with the potential cut there in the center of the board. So with this move and this move being Miai, um, black can cut one way or the other. So there is a potential problem there with white not having a perfect connection in the center. But the shape move would be white four. Um, bumping against here would be very slow. Um, the whole problem here is that black's group on the right, just with this basic shape, so like even if we assume white plays a lot of local moves, this is still alive. It's, it's just impossible to kill it, basically, because black has the, the two eye shape here, very locally. So that black group is so strong that anything in the general area is probably not very valuable. So that's why the players are sort of leaving it at this point. So black pulled back and white pulled back. Um, black will probably... I would want to continue in the center, but doing something with the two stones on the right is also um, probably an option. Hmm. Little Sloth is asking, how much do pro players at this level prepare for each other's games? Um, well, um, even at my level, there's a lot of general preparation for, for instance, openings that I want to do or, um, or that I'm interested in or that I think that various people might be trying against him, against myself. So there's this kind of general pre preparation that is not particularly um, about some particular person. Um, but then there's... Um, in matches like this, when the players know beforehand who, who they're going to be playing. So, for instance, Yama knew a few days ago, at least. Well, he knew yesterday that it was going to be uh, Fang uh, Tingyu. And, of course, just at the beginning of the tournament, he would know that that was one of the potential opponents. So um, there could be some more particular preparation Um in my case, I don't do that much. It's just because um, so much is centered around um, research with computer programs nowadays that um, the first few moves, there's not so much uh, variance. They usually play star points and um, or a combination of star points and three, four points. And the follow-up is it does focus very much on the three, three point invasions and stuff like that. And so it's very similar to each other. Um, and 
so the general preparation is, in a way it's more important I, I i think it's more important in a way but you can see in this game i think the point uh, i would make with according that has to do with that is the way that yama started by playing two three four points here sort of taking it off the map of uh, what most players would study for common openings they would be focusing more on the blacks on black's ideas with playing a star point and a three four point and what black was going to do if white had played two star points which is the most common way for white to handle that and so when white plays this way the fact that these are three four points it's going to change everything um in particular it takes away the three three point invasions from black so it's a lot more potential territory that white has and it changes the whole opening so it potentially it's taking it off the map for black um if black had a game game plan based based from preparation you might say hmm I think the the crab names are usually with uh three five points uh and that's Sifis asking if it's called the crab eyes um the the names that have to do with crabs or lobsters tend to be um f three five points for some reason but I could be wrong I'm, I'm not so familiar with um the English name for that opening yes Bug cat, cat bug agrees with me. So black has continued with the right side. I'm not really surprised by that. He's continued with the right side, um, putting pressure on the whole white group. So white's group has only, um, doesn't have any eyes really, <laughs> and is floating in the center. Uh, we'll have some opportunities to move to the left side of the board um but the problem was that if even if black had played um if black had continued like this and sort of given up those two stones then um if white manages to reduce the side somehow and, and it's going to be difficult for black to kill this group if Matt white just lives in the center there then it's not really gained very much so it's kind of a gamble here for black when black is trying to get the whole left side um but it might not be realistic to expect the whole side to become black's territory so it's a, in a way taking away white's eyes here it's a more um a more active move it's more tenacious a kind of an attack and um black's going to be able to settle for a, a slightly smaller area on the left because black is not giving white any territory or eyes so that that's the whole idea here Hmm. Yes, talking of odds, um, that's Alexander begging, begging, begin. Um, says that it's 69% um, for black. So, um, but we have seen Utah win with worse odds. The yesterday I was watching, was it yes? No, it was a few days ago. Um, a game between it was uh, Shibano Toramaru and uh, Motoki, uh, who's uh, one of the players in the round robin leagues in Japan. So he's one of the top players. And there was one move that lost something like 80%. So it, it happens to the best players. Okay, so White did play this move in the center. And Black is starting with the press in the upper, upper left. That's a move that's probably always, it's always safe to play. I mean, it's it's generally considered a good move. 
um, by professionals. And it, it usually gets fairly good scores from computers also. Okay. Um, in Twitch, Vertigo, Vertigo Royal is asking, is Go one of those games where you have to start young to get good? And it depends. Um, so, like, if you're talking about becoming a top pro in, uh, or a world champion or something like that, um, I'd probably say yes to that. And so you probably have to start... Um, a lot of Japanese players start when... They say they start them as soon as the, the baby is not going to swallow the ghost stones, because that's dangerous. <laughs> so, provided the ba baby isn't putting the stones in his mouth, it's, it's okay to start him playing. Um, so they start very young um in japan and china korea and um fairly soon the child will know if he wants to become a pro or not um i learned the game at the age of 11 or 10 or 11 i don't really remember and compared to the students in japan that was very late and the same is true of course of korea and china i'm just using japan as an example because i'm more familiar with the Japanese setup. Um, so when you're going to be a top, when you're going to be a professional period, it's, it's a lot easier to start early. And it's, it's much more, there's an advantage to that in that you sort of know, you have a kind of an intuitive understanding that it's more deep. And so I was the exception. I started 11 years old and I actually made it to pro um, usually you're, um, nowadays you're kicked out in the teens. You're, you're kicked out of the study group for professionals, um, just because in Korea and China, um, they're, they're young players who are becoming champions. They're usually in their late teens or something like that. And so, um, in order to compete with that, you have to have, um, the young players have to have to have the chance. So. Um, the idea is that um, the players who are older or too old, they should be given a chance to stop studying and go and, and go back to school and have a chance in, in some different um, area. So yeah, so if you're going to be a pro, that the answer is yes. But um, for instance, um, I know someone, one of my personal friends, who was 80 when she started playing Go. And she became a 3 down. So that's um, that's pretty good. Uh, it was a 3 down, a Japanese 3 down. So I'd say about 5 stones against in a teaching game against a pro. So it, she wasn't a top amateur, but she was, she was pretty good. So if um, you're talking about understanding and enjoying the game, and... Um, it is, I'd say a three down is at a level, a level where that person is already can, can enjoy watching top professional games um, with a fairly deep understanding of what, what they're trying to do at least. Although maybe not the calculation skills, but something close to that. It's, it's good enough to be understanding the game. So yeah, if you're if you're just going to enjoy the game, um, have it as a hobby. Uh, I don't think the age, your age, really makes a difference. It, it really depends on how much time, um, how involved you're ready to get. Okay, um, where would I recommend a beginner to go learn? Um, on my YouTube channel, I have a whole playlist of uh, videos. Um, for beginners. So I um, I start with the rules, but it goes on to basic shapes and some general ideas. Um, just playing is probably the best thing for you to do. So um, if you're a beginner, if, you, if you've if you learned the rules, um, you should try to find people to, to help you. There's, there's a lot of double uh, cues playing on the net. So you could find people to play uh, correspondence games with you, for instance, on OGS's a place which I would suggest. Uh, that's the online Go server, in case you haven't heard of it.
Yeah. So playing a lot, doing my life and death problems will help. Just trying to remember the shapes. Okay, so white has finally started a fight on the right. So the question here is, will black extend or will black cut? So uh, the center area is starting to get fairly big. Okay, so black extended. Yeah, so that's probably the the other option. Oops, that was that was not intended. The other option is to play here. And for instance, um, if black just does something like this, black can capture these stones. Um, but it's probably not so big. That's just the, the six stones there. And white's going to have some territory in the center of the board. So in this case, uh, black would probably continue with... So it's the co here. Um, sort of hard to judge. White can still save these six stones. And the, the situation in the center is a co, which if white wins, white's going to capture some black stones in the center. So it's, it's an even fight there. So instead of doing that, black extended in the game. And uh, even if white connects, uh, white did connect, yeah. Um, black's group on the right, just because it's so strong, black doesn't have to worry about that group and can leave it pretty much indefinitely. So black's going to continue... Um, Strengthening that bamboo joint there in the center of the board. And you can see that black's position on the left side is starting to is starting to look like it could become a black territory. So that's that side of the board is sort of working for black. Uh, and the right side, black can handle this move that white's just played because black's side group is strong. So black will probably oh, black played on this was a bit um that was a big move. But um, I thought black might have continued with the bamboo joint. But this is a big move also. I mean, I was expecting black might continue with a move close to the bamboo joint. <laughs> right, Leonardo, I agree. If you, when you have other responsibilities, it is it does take up some of your time. Um, jumping here, it's a, it's a big move. It makes a line there. Um, you might have trouble killing white if white invaded, for instance, somewhere around here. Um, but it's going to be difficult for white too and like black if black gets some profit towards the lower left corner or the lower side sometimes it's going to be okay for even if white manages to i sort of doubt that white would live here and if if we're talking about thinness in this direction uh, this is probably something that black can have handle even locally just answering here probably not a big deal or even here so so um although black is a little bit thin. Uh, black is also does have a fairly flexible position there. So yes, so it does look like it's relatively easy for black to play continue this game. And if white tries to attack black on the right side, it's just the fact that black's so strong on the right there. So if white does stuff like this, um, even if black just curls around. Stuff like this, maybe. Maybe this way. Um, the fact that Black's group in the lower right corner is so strong, it makes it relatively easy for Black to handle White's attack. And, and so, in this variation, White would be gaining some points towards the corner, but would be getting to some trouble in the center of the board. Sort of like this would be, I get the feeling this is the kind of thing that Yema might get into. He's, he's pretty good at this kind of fight. Oh yeah, but he played the solid move. So this is a fairly solid move. Uh, it's the shape move.
Okay, uh, Vertigo Royal is asking, uh, would you evaluate a uh, position at this stage of the game by feel or some kind of counting method? So you can do uh, one or the other, and positions um, favor counting in some cases and do not favor counting in other cases. So for instance, if we look at White's lower side, this is an area which is relatively um, easy to count. So I would, um, just looking at these stones that White has at, um, at J15 and J16, and I would draw a straight line down to the bottom of the board and say that that was the minimal borderline of White's territory. I'm going to expect White's territory to be somewhere around this line, to say the least. And then I would count something like 15, 17 points. Yeah, 17 points. Um, on the right of that. So so White's corner territory in the lower right corner is going to be at least 17 points. And I would similar, and then I would sort of, then there's positions that are more difficult to count. So that would be, for instance, the lower left corner um, is just undecided. So locally, um, locally a black move would be somewhere around here. This is a move black could actually play. Um, and it would potentially reduce White's corner territory. Also, a move like this would take away the corner territory. So we don't really know, but um, we know at least White's probably going to get a few points there. And a few points in the upper right corner. It's not really a good idea to, to try to count a lot. So this is a position where, apart from that one white territory in the lower right, the rest of the territories are pretty vague. Uh, although if Black plays one here, I'm sort of doubting that White would be able to um, invade this territory. So if black plays here, the whole territory is going to, that's going to be something like 50 points. And again, the borderline is still just a little bit fuzzy. And this early in the game, sometimes it's a bad idea to, to try to make too detailed a count. Um, so I'd say somewhere around 50 points. And I wouldn't bother about a more detailed calculation yet in the game. because Just because uh, when things like this happen, when things like this happen, the borderline is going to move a little bit and it, it sort of depends on various things and how black responds to that sometimes you get white gets to break in a little bit because of something more important happening in the rest of the board which is still wide open so i don't i don't count it that deeply but i, I say that um at the maximum this is going to be somewhere around 50 points black has a few points on the right side i would just sort of say that's close to Comey, and then the upper right corner it's impossible to count it yet. So you have these positions that are not favorable to making a um, calculation, really. So it's, it's more of a feeling thing. Um, if you want to get a good idea, an idea, one thing to do is, if you have a lot of sm relatively small territories that are in the vicinity of 10 points, one thing you can do is you can count the number of territories. Um, usually, goal games uh, have some kind of time control. So it's, it's not really an efficient use of your time to be attempting to count territories that are not, that don't have a very stable borderline yet. So this, uh, this potential 50 point territory um, on the left half of the board. Oh, okay. Wait a moment. Black did play that. Okay. So this was the game move. Um, so when black plays here, um, of course, you have to be able to read out what happens if white jumps into black's territory. So what happens if white does, does stuff like this or stuff like this? Uh, there's some reading that is necessary to be confident um, that this is actually a black territory. My gut feeling is that this is just not going to work for white. So if we say the whole area is going to be black's territory, it's pretty close to... It's in the vicinity of 50 points. That's a huge territory. Um... And if that works for black, then black has 50 points plus the Comey on the right side and some kind of a position on the right side, which is very fluid. The upper right area is very fluid at this point. White's territory is the 15 points in the lower right corner and then some small chunks in the two left-hand corners. 
So definitely not enough territory for white. Um, so the evaluation there is that white has to have a very effective attack on the right side of the board. So the upper right area, which is so open now, is an area where white does have some potential to attack just because of white's previous move here. So this stone here is um, setting up potential for white to probably play somewhere in this area or something like that to isolate those two black, the four black stones. If white can capture these on a the large scale, that's going to change um, my evaluation of the position, actually. Exactly, yes. That, that's a good, a big thing in Go. Actually, one of the reasons that uh, neural networks are so strong is because um, it turns out they're positional judgment is very good. So they, their positional judgment and their judgment of who is ahead, um, although it's, it doesn't really match with the human feeling for the game because like in a position like this, when the computer's, oh, Alexander has just given it to me here, 82% um, for black, um, according to the Nihon Keen channel, I'm not surprised. Um, it looks like something like that. Um, just one slack move or one slight mistake um, would change that. It would make it a close game. So it's for the human players, um, we don't get the feeling that it's 80% won. It's, it's a, it's, there's a lot more distance between this position and actually winning the game. It could potentially become close. I think it's um, white, black should have um, a few points lead at this stage of the game. Um, it looks like Black has it. Oh, there you go. So, so this kind of stuff happens. It gets really. It actually. Um, it might look unreasonable, but this kind of fight is actually very dangerous for Black also. So yeah, so that's there's that evaluation of the size of the territories, which I was, was what I was talking about there. But then when something like this happens, you have to be able to read out, the, you have to calculate um, whether you can kill this white group or kill it without giving up anything on the outside. This black's move is is the most strong move locally, um, where black is refusing to give white any forcing moves from the upper right area. So from it's basically Black's trying to capture it from what is relatively the outside. Okay, Little Sauce says, says it's late here. Um, let's see, at this time of day, it's probably late in the Americas. So maybe that's where Little Sloth is. And was about to go to bed. Okay, well, um, it's a relatively short time limit, so we might get um, get through this game in a couple more hours, I'd say. An hour or so. Actually, the, the players could be running short on time already. Let's see, it's almost... Um, it's 3.30 here, so we're one hour and a half into the game. Already. It, it went by pretty quickly for me. Yes. Uh, one one hour and a half into the stream, actually. Yes. So white extends here. And just the fact that black's knights moved there in the lower left corner, it's not so solid. So black needs to worry about that a little bit. Uh, yes, of course. Um, but yes, the point is that when they only have one hour apiece, Leonardo was saying that the, this is where the players start using their time up. But actually, they're probably running short of time in this particular game because they only have one hour each. Um, and we're one and a half hours into the game. So if we average things out, it looks like Iyama is using more time than Funting You. But um, if we average things out, they should be going into overtime at about 2 o'clock.
Yes. Um, I wouldn't make a, a problem like this. It's too too difficult. Okay, so um, you might notice I wasn't talking very much about the game itself because it's getting really, really complicated and hard to calculate. So um, it's difficult for me to be talking and giving you diagrams at the same time when it gets so difficult, but I'll try. So I'd say the two candidate moves that I would be thinking of for black, one would be here. This would be a really solid move that um, makes a solid connection, takes away all of the potential forcing moves that white had. So for instance, if black does something from this side, uh, white would have, for instance, forcing moves like this. If black plays here, um, it's taking away this from white. So white is limited to something like this, a lot less space. So this would be a very solid move in which black would be probably uh, getting some profit towards the corner. So for instance, in a shape like this, black would be getting a whole side here, and it would be a kind of a trade. Or black could play here, which would be trying to this would be more actively trying to kill the white group. So these are the two moves that I would be... Oh, okay. We have some moves in the game, so let's finish my diagram. Sort of similar to what I was expecting. So I think the idea with this move that was... Black was trying to play some forcing moves here, so ideally Black would get this forcing move and then play something like this, I believe. And this would be putting some pressure on the white group on the side also when black plays something like this and um well white would be able to live like this so potentially putting uh, maybe black would do it this way and would be putting pressure on white on the side so threatening this white group on the side and white would be getting squeezed a lot on all sides so this seems to be what black's plan was and white just ignored it and it looks like white's going to have no trouble living on the side there so white uh, Black has a peep at uh, B to B11 now, so White's probably going to add one more, more more stone to that side, and it lived very easily. So this is an example of how, actually, an example of the kind of trade that was um, something that was sort of in the back of my mind, but I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to happen. Um, so this is how the trade, Black is going to get the corner territory and a piece of the lower side probably. And white is already, um, all white has to do to make a very solid life would be to play this point. This would be the usual, um, this would be the safe move. And uh, what white is thinking about here is what maybe white's trying to find something a bit more efficient. Uh, white does have to add a stone to that. I think if white allows black to, to peep See, I, I believe uh, if white plays here, black will probably peep at this point. And this does not look like it's going to be alive. So, so if we just take a shape like this, um, it's just not alive. Um, actually, black has various ways to continue. But it's not going to be alive. So, so even if we continue with something like this, it looks sort of dangerous for white. So I would expect white to add one more stone to that. A way to play is, that's, that's funny. I'm not afraid of people invading my moyo. I'm afraid of people invading my territory. And yeah, sometimes you think it's your territory. Okay, so white added a stone. Okay, so I, I got it right, I guess. And black is probably going to add a stone to the lower side. That looks like it's a pretty big move. Oh, Shimari. Shimari in the upper right, or some move that would... Um, Reinforce the bamboo joint shape there. 
So th those stones are still in kind of a danger of being cut off from the upper right corner. So playing something in regard to those four stones would be one thing black could do. Black could play um, earlier in the game. I was talking about this Shamari. That's another move that would be big. And it would um, have an effect on what happens on the right side too. So yeah, something like that. I was also thinking of this move. Okay. Which is a big move as far as territory is concerned. It's something uh, more than 20 points, so it's a big move. Okay, and that was a really safe, safe type of move. Twelve thirty a.m. Sabbat night thirteen. Okay. That's a late night. You would go for d7 without reading. Okay, so white kicks. Um, this is... Black's going to answer that locally. Maybe the honey underneath. I played Yama Yuta, I guess, a couple of times. Uh, I played him in a... I remember playing him in a game with short time controls. So it was... Um, it got pretty nasty, actually. Yes, yes. I think um, Cyphus was talking about P, P7 on this board. Let's put it on the board just in case. It's, it's probably a good move. So if Cyph what Cyphus was saying is that he thought he wanted to play here. Um, that's actually um, conceivable, conceivably a good move. This, this, this is very similar to playing the one space jump. And it is a better connection to the bamboo joint group. So it's um, something that black could have played. But with this move, even if white um, plays here, black has a kind of a forcing move here, which is going to connect up to the side. So it's not as if black is going to be in trouble. Okay, white, black um, is going to force with that. So at this point, uh, we're looking at the territory, and also we're looking at the fact that White's group in the center is not settled yet. Oh yeah, so I lost to Yama Yutan, the one game that I remember. Um, so that was Jack Zheng just making sure. <laughs> he was already a, a tough player. He was already starting to take the titles when I played him. Uh, yes, Yama is trying to reduce the top left. It's also an important move that White played there to reinforce the upper left corner, um, which in some of the variations it could have become a uh, liability. At this stage of the game, corners are big, and it's a it's going to be a good exchange for White if Black, for instance, if Black were to play down like this on the second line, 
this whole exchange would have been a profit for white. Okay, here we go. Black is in attacking the center. So this move, it doesn't necessarily have any territory attached to it, but it is threatening to cut white off there. So, um, for instance, for instance, there's this move, um, which is going to be putting some pressure on white. If white plays like this, you can see how white's position there is, is not so good. So, um, or even if black plays here. So you can see how black is trying to squeeze white in the center there. So that's one move that black is looking at. And also it's sort of awkward for white to add a stone in that direction. Um, just because even if black plays here, the whole white group there, it's, it's just connected. Actually, black will probably have to, I should, I should revise that and say black's going to play here. Um, but the whole white group there is not very well connected, and it doesn't have eye shape yet. So that's what black is aiming at. Black is thinking of attacking white in the center of the board. So this weak white group here is going to be one of the focuses. And as far as territory is concerned, um, at some point black's going to have to, to get to, to this point. This is going to be pretty big. So this is a really big move towards the lower side. It's more than 20 points. So this is this is pretty significantly big move that Black should be trying to get to, but um, he wants to attack White in the center of the board first. And in some cases, Black can get some more territory on the upper side, um, but the upper side is not so. There's the upper right corner is still open. There's still potential co or something in there, and so the upper side in general is not so important. So everything revolves around the fact that white's group in the center is not settled. In some cases, in some cases, white can counterattack. So if white plays the honey here, uh, you can see that black's group is not 100% alive either. So white is sort of eyeing the potential to, to attack here, and it could lead to something in, in center area, um, a continued attack. So white would like to be able to isolate and take away the eyes from this black group. But black is going to try to force troll that by attacking in the center first. So it's a kind of a... Um, both sides are trying to attack here. And it's a question of who gets to it first. The 3-3, the three, three, yeah, the 3-3 three, three would end up a right corner. Looking at it locally, it's probably going to be something like a co or It could even... If we assume the rest of the board was settled, it would be a position where white could... Uh, play there to make a living shape. It's just the fact that um, it all connects up with the weak white group in the center of the board. Sometimes white won't have the opportunity to, to live like that. Okay. Okay, so that was a defensive move. So with this move, um, I would say that black is, in most cases, black is going to be alive on the left side. So what I mean when I say that is, um, so we can assume that in some cases, white will be able to play this forcing move. So if we have this exchange and we have white play here, Now, if it's it was if it was like this, if it was this shape, then it would not be alive. It would not be enough room. But when we have this shape, it's going to be enough room. So this is an example of my basic life and death problems sort of in action. So eventually, when black connects here, this is a seki, so live shape. Or if white plays here like this, so this is a shape where black can live locally. In most cases, black doesn't have to do that. For instance. Um, there's some potential for white to fall apart in the center of the board when this stuff like this happens. So it's, it's not as if white can just do this without any preparation. Um, but in, in the worst case scenario for black, black does have this forcing move which will allow black to live locally. Um, so there's there's all these problems which you sh should recognize if you're... Um, so like this one, if we make it into a life and death problem, this is how white kills this group. 
it depends on everything in the area being very strong for white. So in, in a life and death problem, uh, white would be solidly surrounding that black group so as to avoid moves like this being forcing and stuff like that. All this stuff, you just know it. If you do the basic problems, then you sort of develop the pattern recognition uh, that gives you that knowledge. So we can say the black group is pretty solidly alive there. Um, and white left it. So white's not defending the center. Looks like white is hoping to scoop out the upper right corner. Oh yeah, so since white did that, let's talk about some variations. Let's talk about some variations in the corner. For instance, um, one way that this could have become a co would be white playing the hanging connection here and black. Um, and this could potentially lead to a co there in the corner. If black just plays like this, white will have enough room to live. Or if black plays here, I mean, if black plays here, white has enough room to live. Uh, for instance, if white plays like this, or white could leave it and hope for a co later in the game. So that's one thing. There's also the fact that if white plays here, in this kind of board position, white has a jump here, which is significantly improving white's position there. So if we assume black plays like this, usually in this shape, it's going to be difficult for black to kill the white group, even if um, white has two ways to play. But um, basically when black does this and tries to kill the white group, black has all these weaknesses all over the place. Usually it's going to fall apart. So it depends on your reading out that variation, but usually it's not reasonable for black to try to kill. And you can often see black playing something like this and white adding a stone here. So kind of a typical variation there. So that's some examples of how white could have used the 3-3 point in an end game situation. I think in this game board, the game position here, um, there's the fact that the upper side is more wide open so white will be happy with a variation where white ends up okay didn't happen so um white would be more happen happy with a variation where white ends up playing a number of moves on the upper side so for instance something like uh this even um, where that black stone would be sort of isolated and white would be starting to make a territory on the upper side so something like this there is the fact that um if it gets really wild, so for instance, something like this, we can see potentially black's going to get in trouble with that bamboo joint that can be sort of isolated in the center of the board. So for instance, with something like this, um, white would have um, sort of artificial variation there, but you can see how in some cases white would have potential to surround that bamboo joint. And that would be really big. So um, you can see how the local position here is a bit more volatile. And that would be why white is playing the attachment here instead of the 3-3 invasion. So that, that's my explanation of why white plays that way. And when black plays on the outside, there's two local moves that you see. Um, there's this one and there's the, the game move, which was this one. So if white plays this way, in this board position, black would just be aiming to allow white to live on a small scale. So maybe something like this would be working, um, where a, a standard Joseki variant would be white playing like this and living. Um, white could crawl on the side um, or could jump or could play an attachment here. Um, this would be something like this. Um, you can see how black's getting something on the side and actually with a strong position, towards the center, black would still have some potential to attack white's group in the center. So one thing I'm talking about here is that when black plays moves like this, um, it can be a bit tricky for white to, to connect everything up in the center of the board, even if black plus plays very, yeah, something like this. You can see that, uh, I, I, I can sort of see white getting cut off in some of the cases, and white doesn't really have very good eye space for the whole group here. So getting cut off would be a, a big problem for white. 
So if white had played on the second line like that, black's idea would, general idea is that I think black would try to make a strong position towards the center while allowing white to lift. So white plays towards this side. Um, yeah. And so if black had, <clears throat> yeah, black could have played this way. I'm not exactly sure how white would have continued this. Um, in this, usually you see white playing an Atari from the second line, but in this case, you might, it might be this one. Um, so white's trying to use the, the cut there to live in the corner. And black connected. Um, if white connects in the corner, it's not going to die, but it is a bit cramped and black has really good shape on the outside. So that's, um, basically white had a choice of the attachment played in the game, which is this move. Or another good shape move would be extending or playing something like this towards the side. Um, but it looks to me like, since the right side was sort of open anyway, I think black would probably just be satisfied to, to get a good position in the corner. Um... And locally jumping here or playing the knight's move is going to be a big move. So white attached, that's a stronger move. And the fact that, again, um, if black had played something like this in the corner, a sort of joseki like move would be to play here. Uh, but in this board position, we can see it sort of linking up to the Volatile, volatile position on the side. The problem that black potentially has on the side, and white would not immediately save the cornerstones because black doesn't really have, have the time to go after them in this variation. White would be capturing black in the center of the board. So that would be big. And so black answers on the outside. White got a really big life here. That was really big. Locally, that's a lot of territory in an area that could have been black's territory. And so you see Black's, Black's a bit angry here and is trying to attack White in the center of the board. Um, it looks like we're coming to a climax where White um, has to settle the center group, but if White can handle everything, White's gained a lot of territory there. So White has more than 10 points in the upper right, close to 10 points in the upper left, um, about 7 points on the left side. So that's close to 30 points and 17 points... Um, so let's say that the lower side is somewhere around 15 points, 20, 35, more than 40 points for white. So that's as detailed I want to go into the territory at this point. But black doesn't really have a lot of territory here. Black has a minimum of about 10 points in the lower left corner, and it can increase by 10 points more if black plays another move. Black has a few points on the left side, it's less than 10 points. Uh, black has a few points on the right side, which is less than 10 points. Uh, so black's territory is just not adding up to the same size as white's territory. And the reason that computer programs might be giving black good per winning percentages still is the fact that black probably has an attack against this white group in the center. Black has to exact, um, execute it very well. And that, that's going to be a bit of a challenge, actually, because uh, it requires a lot of calculating. At this point of the game, with a time control of just one hour, um, I'm pretty sure that they're both running out of time. In fact, if I look at the server that I'm using right now, um, it has Yama running out of time already. So he's probably in his overtime. And Fang Tingyu has something like six or seven minutes left. So the um, times we see in these servers, they're not always um, exactly accurate but they tend to be fairly close. So a lot depends on um, how white can handle this weak group in the center of the board. Looks like White sort of ignored that cut in the 3-3 point. White's trying to... Um, this 3-3 point cut is the kind of move you see a number of times. It's okay to play these cuts um, because it's asking 
even though you know, you should know that white's going to be able to capture this stone. So that's why some players would be sort of hesitant to play this cut here. Um, but actually, for instance, if white, if white plays from this side, black gets this, this forcing move later in the game, and that's going to make a difference to what happens in the center of the board. So even if black doesn't quite play it yet, at some later time when white starts to try to attack black there, or counterattack, you might say, having this forcing move against the corner is going to change what happens on the upper side. So that's one thing. And the other point is that if white takes from this side, um, then very it's very similar that in this case, black's forcing potential forcing move will be from the other side. So for instance, if white plays here, um, black already has a forcing move here, which connects the black group. Or if white plays from this side, again, white will have, black will have this forcing move. So black's sort of asking which side white takes from, because when black plays this move, the most the good Aji move, the simplest way to capture it is this way, which immediately is kind of a ladder-like shape. This is how I would, um, if I was teaching a beginner how to capture stones, this is how I would show that the stone is captured. It's the most natural way to capture it, um, but it does give black that forcing move too. So that's what Iyama is doing with curling around here. And if black covers here, then white's going to capture from this side. Uh, so the question is, what happens if black plays on this side? Locally, it's sort of uh, annoying for white because black has this forcing move. And this looks like um, it's not going to be unconditional. But it's, it's um, I'm not sure that black really wants to get into this fight either because black's going to lose something on the upper side and it's going to lose the initiative. So he actually left it. So this is really... Like, potentially, Black's going to lose a lot of points on the upper side, too, because of this exchange in the corner. But um, the po whole point of the 3-3 three, three point cut was to get rid of the threat here, which is, it's very clear that even if White um, peeps here, the fact that Black has, at, at the very least, Black is going to have this squeeze here, which gives Black a connection with Sente. So, basically, Black has taken away any weakness um, any weakness related to the cut at P, P5 there. So in the center here, it's going to be difficult for white to connect everything up. With this peep, without the peep, let's do it without the peep first. So locally, this is a kind of a shape which uh, does sort of connect up the white stones. Um, but you can see that so, for instance, if black just cuts here, yes, so that's cut off. So that's an example of how white can get cut there. And so with the game move, if black answers this locally, white's going to be able to connect everything up here. And this is perfectly connected. There's nothing, that, nothing bad that can happen to white now. Apart from the fact Apart from the fact that um, black does have, in some cases, black will have a move like this. And potentially some profit. So the profit I'm talking about is, um, for instance, stuff like this, where black cuts off some, some a, a stone or so. Or if white plays here, there's still stuff like this, which could potentially cut off some white stones in the center of the board. So there is just a little bit, but um, nothing really that convincing. Okay, so um, I think it's okay. That's George is asking how many BOME periods. I think it's five periods of one minute. Uh, that's my understanding. Oh, oh, Leonardo says he thinks it's three periods of one minute each. It could be. I could be wrong. Oh, Alexander began is saying, well, maybe only one. I think it's the more important part of that is the the size of the period. So if it's one minute, um, it's going to be one minute as long as they keep playing anyway. Uh, 
Hell yes, and a while ago, Vertical Royal was asking, do these players memorize life and death shapes, or is it more that they're reading them to conclusion? And I meant to answer that, but I got, um, I digressed and started talking about something else. But it's a very good question, and I sort of like it, because it gives me an opportunity to talk, talk about my life and death problems. Um, the problems that I publish on my YouTube channel are mostly sort of what I would call classics. They're problems that have been around for hundreds or maybe thousands of years. And so they're very old, they're basic shapes. And it's just, some of them are just so useful and um, common that it's virtually it's impossible to um, improve them, really. So they, they, they come up with the same shapes all the time. They're things that happen in actual games. And so as problems, they're not really, the calculation of the problems is not so difficult. They're relatively easy when we compare them to problems that, for instance, some professional players will do. But they're very important because they're the shapes, they're the life and death problems that well, could come up in your games. In fact, I would argue that they are happening in your games, um, provided you notice them. So the problem is that you don't see them coming and you make some mistake um, on the way to getting to that problem. And so to that extent, there's these shapes that they, the players just know. They, they, it's part of the patterns that they know. And it means that uh, when, when you get to that shape, everything just, you might say they're reading it out, but it just sort of happens automatically, like it's, um, like a videotape on, on fast, um, on, on two times speed. Okay, so we're getting some moves that I was talking about. So this is the move that Black has that can cut off some white stones in the center of the board. And it looks like the, the whole, the large part of White's group is going to survive, um, but Black is trying to cut, get some extra profit in the center of the board, just cutting off that one white stone. Um, Cloud79 is asking, do you think that time controls have decreased the quality of games compared to 50 years ago when Go was less developed but players had more time for each move? And I would say that um, by modern, actually I would go back more than 50 years and look at the games from the Edo era where they did not have time controls at all. And so they could think as long as they wanted. Sometimes they would take the game home and, and study it. Um, or sometimes they would adjourn for, for weeks, actually, months. Um, and so the quality of the games towards the end was very high. So um, there's, it depends, basically, whether the game was between rivaling schools, in which case um, there would be more control of what they did in between moves, or whether the games were just casual, relatively casual games, in which case... They could stop for, um, and then come back to the game after several weeks or something. So the, the um, overall effect was that the the level of play towards the end of the game was very high, with very few mistakes, and with just one minute for each move, um, you do see more mistakes in the modern games towards the end of the game. Okay, so Black is starting something in the upper right corner. It looks like Black is probably just going to get kind of a squeeze. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is whether Black is going to... Oh, uh, yeah, Black didn't try anything. So, if Black had played this move, and then here... Uh, this white would be able to win the race to capture with this move. So locally, it wasn't quite working for black. Um, would have been more complicated with this, but in some cases, even if black gets something like a co in the corner, 
it's not always um, good when black is going to be losing points towards the upper side. So he just took the, the simple squeeze here. And that exchange of the Sarari at the uh, R3 point with an extra white stone made a difference. So for instance, if black had simply played here and white had played here, and then if we assume at some point white does get to push through and cut here, black doesn't really have a lot of forcing moves against the corners. It's limited to this kind of stuff. Whereas um, it's slightly better when white black has played the game move. So when black has played this way, And later on, if we assume that at some point this liberty gets filled up, um, in this case, uh, black gets the honey here, and, and this stone is not going to be captured later. So it's a slightly better forcing move that black has towards the corner um, in the case that the liberty fills up. So it's just a slight advantage there. And it makes, uh, it makes a difference even if the li liberty is not filled um, because, yeah, even when black plays here, it's slightly better as an endgame sequence also. Okay, and speaking of endgame, it does look like they're going on to the endgame. Black didn't really get a lot out of this attack, so, um, Alexander is saying that according to Nyong Kim, which is, I think they use some form of katago, although it doesn't give the points, so it doesn't give, um, the point score. I don't really know how it's working, but it seems to be a, a kind of a form of katago that they're using. And yes, yes, it's probably pretty close, giving white a slight advantage. I think the whole fight here in the center of the board, it was not very successful for black because white got the upper right corner. Uh, white's taking this big point on the side. Um, all black got was that territory in the center. So let's take a look at territory. Uh, white's upper right corner is still about 10 points. If black plays that Hane at R6, the white territory is going to be 9 points. But if white plays there, it's more like 12 points. So yeah, somewhere around 10 points. Um, and white has close to 15 points on in the upper left corner. More than 10 points anyway. So that's more than 20 points. And about seven points on the left side. So I'd add those three areas to make about 30 points. And somewhere in the vicinity of 15 points in the lower right. So that takes white's territory to somewhere around 45 points. And I'm being vague here because basically the boundaries of these territories are pretty vague anyway. So it's there's a lot of fluidity in the size of these territories. But just getting a general idea, I'd say about 45 points for white. So black needs um, black needs more than 50 points to make the game close. Um, black's territory in the upper right center area, it, it could if black adds a stone now, it's going to be about 20 points or more. And then there's something like Komi on the right side, so let's, let's say it's a minimum of 25 could be a bit more for black there and then a small territory on the left that's it's, again it's a bit more than five points but let's add those two to say it's more than 10 points just to simplify things that adds with black's area in the upper right to make 30 points um but for instance so like if we had imagined a variation like this where i would be safe in saying that black's territory there is so if we look at like this this is definitely more than 20 points so that would add up to more than 30 points if we add the two small black territories. But white would get this. And black's corner would be about 10 points. So that's 40 points for black. Plus this area <clears throat> in the lower left part of the center is probably going to be a few points for black. It could be about 10 points. So black does have close to 50 points. But when white plays at 4, uh, this takes white's territory on the lower side to something like 25 points. Yeah somewhere around 25 points. So that means white has um, 55 and black doesn't have enough. So that's why playing here was a really big move. So covering here, that's a very thick way to play, a very solid way to play. So um, playing on the third line here, it would be taking more territory, but it would be weaker towards the center. So there would be some weakness there. 
so stuff like this might happen. Um, why would get a chunk out of the side territory anyway? So a very solid move here, which is going to lose some of the side territory uh, when white plays like this. It's going to be a bigger territory for white. Um, bigger territory for white on the side. This is actually about 20 points. If we count it this way, it's about 20 points for white there. Black doesn't seem to have anything... So yeah, so that's that's pretty big. So there's more territory for white potentially on the side, um, but also black's center is going to be more solid. And while it's a really big move for white to play here, um, this is a point where black would probably take the opportunity for instance, to play something like this. Uh, so locally, this would be a big move that would bring the center area there. Um, it's still less than 20 points, but it's pretty close to 20 points. Really difficult to calculate, really, when we have all these big moves. Something on the upper side is also big. Uh, if white plays here, we can see this is potentially going to um, destabilize black's territory in the center. So this is um, a kind of a potential fight brewing here on the upper side. Oh, G7. We're talking about G7. Uh, Cyphus and Jack Zang are talking about G7. They're worried that black might be able to cut white off. So let's, let's try that. So let's try it one move back. Black plays here and here. White will probably um, play like this. Um, it looks sort of difficult for black, but um, yes, white is not connected. But black's group there is not going to be alive either. So if we assume something like this happens, oh, this could be trouble for black in the center. This is really the kind of fight that white Yama is probably starting to, hoping to instigate. There's also the fact that... Um, on this side, black is not going to be alive. So if we look at this black group, there's always the pot potential for white to cut it off and make trouble for that black group. So it's really dangerous for black to start this. Although it's an idea that um, black might be thinking about, but um, it's just too dangerous probably for black to try to do that. There's so much danger on both sides. So Black's group on in the center there is, is not so strong either. So there's a potential fight with White doing stuff like this and looking to cut here, uh, which could be trouble for Black on this side too. Um, so maybe this way also. So if White gets one more push in relation to this, so like if, if, if something is happening here, White gets to push here somehow. Um, Black could be getting into trouble in the center of the board, too. So it's just too dangerous. And it's a, it's a move that's... In the future of the game, it could be threatened. But um, it's not working quite yet. Okay, if white plays away now, playing a honey hair will become a very, very big move. Um, with a potential knight's move here, which is going to be pretty forcing. It's, it's usually forcing. So something like this. A lot more territory for black on the side. So that's why I would be... I would want to play here. Somehow the game is not moving forward. Oh. No, no. Oh, sorry. I got some moves now. Okay, so white played a knight's move here. Um, that was an area that was um, on my mind in general. 
Okay, Black is threatening the cut now. Uh, not only does Black have solid eye space on the left side, um, but also it's, it's going to be a lot better shaped when Black cuts there. You might notice that Black pushed once on the fourth line. This is an area where if White had answered like this, it would have um, significantly changed um, what I was talking about before. So if, if this happens, uh, the fact that Black um, connecting here becomes a forcing move uh, will make a big difference in the life or death of the Black group on the left side. And it could make this whole thing um, playable for Black. It would be viable. So that's what was happening with white pulling back on the third line. Okay. White's still not quite connected. Okay, now white's connected. So they must be in overtime now. Yeah, it looks like they're in overtime. Michael Go361 is saying, Yama is still only 32, despite his many titles. Do you think he's still improving? I'd say 32 is pretty old for a, um, for a tournament Go player. And he's probably at his peak of performance. Um, the fact that we have superhuman computer programs, it does make it um relatively easier to improve our games but yes um i think like in another decade or so um it does become relatively difficult to calculate at the same level there's some pretty insane calculation being done by these players White M3 was probably never forcing. So that's why White was not playing at M3. Uh, hello, Rick Liebenstein. So White M3 was probably never going to be a forcing move. And that's why White didn't play it. So instead, White plays down to the third line. And um, if Black pushes through there, White will be able to connect on this side. Maybe, maybe immediately. It's not a big deal. I think the game, they're pretty close to being finished there, but there is this, this honey. Um, so locally, this would be a reasonable move. It would be a big move. And otherwise, this would be a big move. This is really big. Uh huh. This is the big move on the lower side. It's really big also for white. Um, if white gets to play... If white gets to play this sequence. It's just like it's... 20 points on the lower side. And if we look at the territory, that's... Something around 50 points for white on the whole. Hmm. It's pretty close, actually.
Okay. Black jumped. I, I was so sure that it was going to be this move. Just because of the fact that Black has this slide, which is sort of forcing there. If White plays away. He jumped. And White played here. So what is White trying to do? Okay, so probably here. Um, on this side, there's not really nothing that White can hope to accomplish. So, so for instance, this would just, it would be completely hopeless. So the idea probably is to make this, um, in this case, the marked White Stone is helping to capture the cutting Black Stone. So that's how that would be working. And something like this would be threatening the cut here. So you can see White's getting something out of this. And Black has pushed through. Okay, we're talking about strong players, and looks like people... I, I missed a few comments there, sorry about that. But we're talking about Li Chang-ho, who is... Um, I agree with Leonardo de Wagner about the fact that Li Chang-ho did have very precise calculation skills, especially um, in the size of territories. So, like, his, his positional judgment of the territory was very, very good and he could he could count territories very well okay so what's happening here in the center so white cut first and if black answers yeah so if black answered had answered let's see defensively like this uh let's let's make a diagram and stuff like this Uh, you can see how White's just getting a lot of stones on the outside. And it's potentially going to be trouble for Black. So Black's not going to die on, on in the center. But we'll have to deal with that group on the right side and stuff like that. So this is what White is trying to do here with the cut. So basically it's the fact that Black cannot cut <clears throat> a three. Because White can capture the one stone with that marked stone. So first of all, that's what White was doing. And where did black play? Black pushed through here. So I think black's idea is to try to for play a forcing move here. So um, so when white does stuff like that, let's see. This is getting to be pretty complicated. So um, in this kind of fight, Setting up this forcing move, which would in some cases set up this forcing move. So maybe here once. Um, just sort of setting that up in advance is what I think Black is doing here. And where did White play? White played a Hane. Uh, White's trying to make things complicated here, isn't he? So White plays a Hane. Um, indeed, it is confusing. Um... But this uh, this looks like it could be a bit too dangerous for black. So um, maybe just like this. White does have moves like this on the side. Maybe, maybe this one. No, no. Actually, maybe just here. Um, so this kind of thing. This could happen. This could be... And dangerous for black.
Hmm. Uh, so he's looking at ideas like this. So that that's sort of my snap judgment. I don't know if it's 100% correct, but um, looks like trouble could be happening in the center of the board here. So black answered here. Oops, sorry about that. White connected. Black played there. Uh, basically, white was still threatening to capture... I guess in this case, white would just capture this stone and would have some potential to be alive. So if black plays here and plays down here, let's just give this move to black somehow. Uh, this is just a lot of trouble for black. Black's not only in trouble on the upper side, um, but it's going to be in trouble on this side too. Yeah, yeah, black's going to be in trouble. So this is just going to be bad for black. Or otherwise, white will have room to make two eyes. So this is probably going to end up with white having two eyes here. Even if we just do something like this. Maybe here. Yeah, there's this problem too. And black's group on the upper side. It's, this is falling apart for black. So black answered here. Okay, so black is going after the three stones. And white is going to continue trying to attack black in the center of the board. It looks like it was pretty successful for white, doesn't it? Okay, but um, black does, let's see, is black connected here? Yeah, so black does have to connect on the right. Maybe something like this. And white can push through here. So white does have some potential to save those stones. And if black pushes through here, white can push through and cut. Okay, um, let's put you back on the game here for a moment. And I do have to uh, get some tea now, so I'll be right back. Uh, just a few minutes. So I'll, I'll take a break for a few minutes and I'll be back with you uh, to continue watching the game.
Okay, I'm back. Uh... <laughs> okay, let's take a look. What's happening here on the lower side? It looks like looks exciting. Okay, uh, first of all, okay, black cuts. Okay, that's not connected. Is that going to be okay? Uh, well, this is, was a big move here in the center of the board. Okay, is this going to be connected? What if white wedges? Okay, Alexander is asking, aren't AIs famously flawed at endgame? It's, it's sort of ambiguous because it's very difficult to learn endgame from an AI because they don't play the correct moves. Um, but that doesn't stop them from winning the games. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's, how, that's the short way of um, how I would explain it. Yes. So... Um, it's not clear to me how black is going to handle this when white wedges here and connects. So let's uh, see that in the game. And white's going to connect on the third line. And black doesn't really have any good way to save the stone black played at L18. which is going to be a problem for black. Yes, um, Kurt Fry, yeah, the wedge was the, the move white just played. So, so this is the wedge that I was talking about. Yeah, and black's not connected here. So this looks like it was a mistake by black, because if black if black extends, white well, can play here and play an Atari, and then move back to this side. And even if black wins the race to capture, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a happy result for black. So, for instance, black has not gained anything and has lost a tempo. In fact, white white has more territory than he started with, and black has less. So this this is a uh, complete this is a disaster I sort of have the feeling that it's the kind of move he might have been looking at with the jump there he might have thought that he had this the jump at i18 maybe he thought he had this tesuji because it would be a it would be a really nice way to play the end game with something like this um, later on. Um, and you would usually think it was a forcing move. Oh, the ko, okay. I don't really approve of this, but uh, <laughs> it's going to be exciting anyway. The problem with this ko is that white's pretty much alive in the corner. So it's, um, I have my, and white has ko threats on the right side of the board. Okay, so this is a code that actually, while white is standing to lose something like 9 or 10 stones after black wins the code, and when white wins the code, it doesn't look like black is losing so much. It's actually the reverse is true. It's a code that's almost black. I would say that black cannot afford to lose this code 
But in some cases, like if black, if white captures the whole right side, it's conceivable that white can lose it. So for instance, if we continue with something like this and something like this, with white capturing all these black zones on the right, um, and you, you can see white's, white's already alive here. Uh, white doesn't even need, need that move. So think in a position like this, uh, maybe white's gaining more than black did. So that's the impression that I have here. Taking these black zones on the right side would be more than 30 points worth of territory. So it's actually very dangerous for black. Um, capturing here is a huge move for white. And it's like that area where black used two stones to make it into a 20 point territory. Most of it's gone and white's getting a lot of territory there. Of course, in this case, black would capture white in the center. So this would probably be too big. Um, but black has to be careful about that call. It's a dangerous call for black. Yes, um, on the YouTube chat, people are talking about the point difference versus the score that computers give. And for instance, Katagul gives both. So it's, um, I find that I learn a lot by looking at both the score and the point difference. Because computer programs, okay, um, they tend to, so we have a few moves here. So white cut on the second line there. Uh, that was a Tezuji anyway. And if black had captured on this side, white would have been able to, at some point, uh, play like this. Um, and it's cold threats. Like, black can throw in here and play here to capture the cutting stones. But you see white got some extra cold threats that way and, and would continue with uh, pushing through here. That would be sente. And so white would be getting something on the right side, too. And the fact that uh, because of this, black had to answer on this side, uh, it was just some extra points that white got there clever endgame move in the process of playing a cold threat. Okay, black doesn't really have so many cold threats. So let's see, where would black play a cold threat? Uh, for instance, well, black still has a cold threat towards the center, probably. Um, but it's a bit, it's a bit sloppy. So, like, if black plays here, uh, this would give white the opportunity to be playing moves like this and making it more dangerous for black there in the center. So, at the moment white plays something like this, black's in pretty deep trouble there, just locally. So that's a kind of an awkward cold threat to be playing. So black played this one. This is probably, this is probably forcing. Yeah, white probably has to answer that. Also looks like it's potentially losing some points. Q2 is a cold threat. Yeah, that's something I wanted to talk about. Thanks, Leonardo. Black does have a cold threat at Q2, but it loses points. So it's a cold threat Black doesn't really want to play. Oh, White didn't answer that cold threat. So if Black had played here, uh, I mean, yeah, let's look at that, make a diagram. If Black had played here, uh, this would be losing points later on when Black plays this endgame. So when Black plays this endgame move, um, Black would like to be able to follow up with uh, these forcing moves here and getting some extra points out of it. So pushing through there 
is going to lose some points. So that's a code threat that black doesn't really want to play. Losing code points with code threats is, is usually painful. So with this move, it's not really clear that black's going to lose points if white answers here. Potentially black loses a point or so, but it's it's in, it depends on how the game continues. So maybe black's not really lost any, any points with this move. It depends. Now white plays... White finished off the code. That's a huge profit white got on the lower side. But of course, on the left side here, um, black can cut too. Black has a choice of cutting or playing here. Um, now white has to make two eyes. And if black plays this way, white can play here. This is probably a lie. Mm-hmm. We could be getting into some kind of crazy trade again. This, is, this could just be my imagination. Let's, let's, let's try this one. It's probably not so good for black. Let's see what's happening here. Actually, in this case, black is getting a nice territory in the center. So this would be pretty good. Okay, black pushed once. Aha, uh -huh, that makes sense. And that's a that's a kind of a key point in, in the case that white tries to make two eyes. So much depends on whether white can survive here or not. It's... Um, the territory is probably pretty one-sided with white having more territory than black. But I don't really see, personally, I don't see how white's going to make two eyes. So it's, that, that's what makes it difficult for me. Okay, I think white's probably going to cover at E, E12. Let's, let's try a diagram. Okay. So black would like to be able to cut here. Uh-huh. But of course this doesn't work. And this is probably not good enough. Although I haven't counted the score. It's probably not good enough for black. White profited on the left side and the lower side. And the lower side was really big. So it looks like it's probably good enough for white. But I would have to calculate that. Um, I would have to count the territory. Uh, if black plays something like this. That looks like it, um, uh, it still looks undecided. <clears throat> Not quite alive, is it? I'm still worried for white. Oh, so white pulled back? I don't really see how uh, where the second eye is. The L14 cut? The I-14, maybe. The I-14 cut is something that could be used to white's advantage, yes. 
Okay, so pushing here, does that give white two eyes? It looks like it's going to be another call. Okay, maybe another call then. Mm -hmm. So basically, at some point, white has to play an Antari at the call. So, for instance, for instance, this one. And of course, black cannot afford to connect. Because white would have two eyes. So black has to play something like this. And we have another ko starting here. But of course in this ko, it's going to be, a, the whole white group is going to die. So this is the kind of ko where we can use Leonardo's ko thread. And it's going to be okay. So black has two ko threads here. And black has a ko thread here. Uh, I'm not so sure about this ko thread. Maybe this ko thread... It could be ambiguous whether this is going to be forcing. It doesn't completely kill the corner. And it's definitely not going to kill white in the center of the board. Hmm. Okay. Maybe not that one. But black does have two co threats. We have Leonardo's co threats in the upper corner. Uh, where are white's co threats? The right side is not big enough anymore. Okay, I don't. It looks dangerous for white, but um, people are saying the computer still likes white. Oh, white pulled back. Okay, I didn't see that move. So, if we isolate the position, it's not alive. If we, yeah. So that move. Um, yeah, but it doesn't look like black can actually kill it. So let's let's do that. If white pushes through and black plays here. So the way black would try to kill it would be this way. But white has this forcing move. And can push through here. So we might try to counter that with a black forcing move here at some point. Which is um, not really working anyway. And it's not even forcing because white can capture here and um, has two eyes in the center. So suddenly it looks like white's just alive. It, it looks very simple. So going back a few moves, I, I suspect that this move was a mistake. And black had to try something a bit more um invasive like for instance a move um move like this or like this that would um for instance if it if we assume this kind of variation this actually kills white provided black can hold together in the center of the board and this looks like it's okay and so this would eventually lead to the cohere where black can still not connect but can play another move in the center. And it would be... This is probably going to be a ko, because um, although black can use one of my Tesuji moves to, to live in the corner, the center looks like it's going to be in trouble. And it just looks so scary for black. <laughs> It's not gonna it's not gonna survive. Black's not gonna survive. So what was I saying? So yeah, if black plays here, white's gonna be forced to use this, and it's gonna be this code because connecting here and if white pulls down it's, it's still gonna involve the life or death of black's group in the corner. But if white answers everything, white is in danger here. And black is holding together here. So maybe it was the this move here. 
I didn't see that move for white, but this is just, it looks so simply alive. Looks like a success for white. So it looks like there was um, a pretty serious mess up for black just at the end of the game, even at this point. And before that, um, I'd say that black was um, sort of losing control of the game when he played this move already. So up to this point, um, people were giving me um, percentages, scores from computers that were really good for black and it looked like black was winning by probably close to 10 points on the board or something like that. Um, but after this, white cuts off the black stone, black has to resort to this coal. Um, probably was getting good for, for white already. And white ignored this coal threat, which surprised me, but he managed to live. So this, yeah. I would call this the losing move, and I'm not sure how it would have turned out if black had played the more aggressive move here. Black had a number of ways to try to take away white's eye space. It looks like this is the best. One fifty seven. Why does K eighteen not work? Let's see what what move is one fifty seven. So this move. K eighteen. Um okay, that's that's uh something that is worth explaining. K eighteen. Now this is a question from Victor Fu fourteen. So white cuts here and plays this. And it's already bad for black because even if black wins the semi, um, black's not, it, it costs black a move. Black's side territory has been reduced. It just wasn't worth it. And so this, this would probably be good for white. Uh, Fan Ting Yu is actually a fairly successful player recently also. So he's, he's, um, it's been a while where he was a bit quiet, but he made a comeback and he's one of the top players now. So it's surprising that he would sort of fall apart towards the end of the game like this. He seemed to be making some pretty serious mistakes. And I think he had a chance to try to kill the white, white group if he had played here. But AEM, I won this game. There's another game tomorrow. I will not be... Covering it, I'm, I'm afraid I, I have something else to do. Um, and um, I'll be back the day after tomorrow. So um, everyone can come back to the same channels, whether you're on Twitch or YouTube. And you can see me the day after tomorrow, in two days from now. Same time, same channel, I'll be here. Um, I plan to be here anyway. So thank you for watching to the end. Uh, let's just finish the finish the game again, just to get the finishing position. Uh, maybe I should throw in a result if I can find one. Okay. How you even got a result? Okay, so white wins. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. And um, sign up to my channel if you haven't already. Goodbye.